Today's passage comes from Book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 7 to 12. As I read through the passage, I hope we can all hear the voice of the living God. Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Acab, Shebatai, Hodiah, Maseiah, Kalita, Azariah, Jodabite, Hanan, and Peliah, of whom were Levites, were teaching the people the law as the people remained standing. They read from the book of God's law, explaining it and imparting insight. Thus, the people gained understanding from what was read. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priestly scribe, and the Levites, who were imparting understanding to the people, said to all of them, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping when they heard the words of the Lord. He said to them, Go and eat delicacies and drink sweet drinks, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is with your strength. Then the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this, is, this day is holy. Do not grieve. So all the people departed to eat and drink, and to share their food with others, and to enjoy tremendous joy, for they had gained insight in the matters that had been made known to them. Amen. For the past two weeks, we have talked about baptism. Especially, we talked about the difference between baptism by water and baptism by fire, and they have shared on their meanings and significance. Today, we want to talk about uh, worship. And the reason that I especially chose uh, this topic is that as we are uh, working on this one, um, inviting newcomers to our church, and that is a kind of the Somang Church project for this year, I especially want to talk about um, the worship and uh, how, what kind of worships are there um, in many different religions and the many different perspectives on what a good worship should look like. How to worship well. And if you get this kind of question, what answer uh, will you give? Every Sunday, uh, we come to chapel and when you listen to a sermon, there must be a kind of standard and a criteria uh, in your heart to define what a good worship should look like. And what would be the standard? Today, I would like to talk about many different styles of worship services executed by, by many different religions. And first one is a dramatic reenactment type. For example, um, that it is a point of view that a good worship service should be like an acting. In short, it should be like a well-planned stage drama. So, for example, a play has a script, a stage, and actors and actresses. In a play, actors perform on a certain stage according to a certain script, and people watch the play performed on that stage. And this is how we understand the worship. Of course, it is the viewer's responsibility to become immersed in the play and participate in it. And there's, uh, let's take another example. Let's take a confession, the ancestral rites. There is a law or custom on ancestral rites, and ancestral rites are offered according to that a specific custom or law. 
when the important day comes, participants are decided, the type and method of food to be served are determined, and the specific order or procedures of the ancestor rights is determined. We follow the relevant laws and do not have the right to do anything on our own. So, for example, if there is a method called Hongdong Pekso, uh, when uh, setting up a ancestral right table, red colored items should be placed in the east and white colored items should be placed in the west. And if there is a custom or law which says only men must participate in an ancestral rights, then only men must participate. So this is a point of view that worship should be like a well-planned stage drama, in other words, a dramatic reenactment, and the Jewish rituals also share a similar point of view. Um, and our Lord has already shared with us what type of sacrifices He wants from His followers. He told us about the types of sacrifices, including burnt offerings, grain offerings, trespass offerings, sin offerings, and peace offerings. And He also told us the seasons for offering sacrifices, and He told us who should offer sacrifices and how. And people may offer sacrifices such as cow, sheep, goats, pigeons, and grain. And pigs, chicken, or other animals uh, were not um, the permitted to be used as sacrifices. And ordinary people cannot perform the duties of a priest. And if we understand worship from this perspective, and it matters a lot uh, whether the ritual was performed at a designated time, and according to the designated procedure and by a qualified person. And this view has been valid among uh, the many religions for a long period of time. And it was so in medieval churches and even today in many of uh, the, the churches, uh, including Catholic and Orthodox. And uh, for example, uh, there are the worships that bishops can perform, and then there are worships that the priests can perform. And uh, this is not done uh, the way it uh, should be. The worships um, may become invalid. So the worship style based on dramatic reenactment um, is also found in our Protestant churches. Uh, for example, there is something like baptism, and the baptism can only be performed by a designated person, a qualified person, and which is uh, the pastor. And the one who performs the worship uh, therefore needs to undergo certain training and should make a confession in a Q&A form in a public setting. And we also need water and a, the wording proclaiming that I baptize you in the name of Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And baptism is valid only when all these are the present. And there was a person who said, uh, who said he felt bad and uneasy after receiving baptism. And after uh, he was received a baptism, he w doesn't seem very happy. And that because the pastor who presided the service called his name differently. And even though the pastor said what he should say, such as, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the baptized person the found it all meaningless because the pastor called his name wrong. So he felt like he was not the person who got baptized but someone else. So in a worship style that follows the dramatic reenactment, each and one of the procedure matters a lot and the qualifications of the presiders also becomes very important. And that second, there is another perspective on what worship should look like. It is through understanding. And this worship style was advocated by religious reformers. 
and they state that worship should enhance worshippers' understanding of God and enable their edification. And they, the reason uh, those the religious reformers came out with uh, this second the form of worship is that if the worship, if the sermon is not fully comprehensible to the general public, it is meaningless. So those religious performers raise objections that worship styles should be based on the true understanding of God and it should be comprehensible uh, to the general public. And this is probably the perspective uh, most of the Presby uh, Presbyterian church members have. And there are also people who follow this, uh, the second perspective, becomes very frustrated, annoyed by the same rituals being repeated over and over again. And they prefer uh, the well-elaborated the ser uh, sermons and the clearly understandable sermons. And then there uh, is also third type of worship. It is more like an immersive type of worshiping, and it values immersive experience and focuses on emotional elevation. In this type of worship, people sing hymns passionately, and then they exclaim amen in a very loud voice, and the worshipers prefer to be burst into tears after listening to the sermons. And Methodism and then Pentecostalism and the full gospel belong to this category. And the style of Somang Church is positioned somewhat in between. And at the point of transition from the medieval ages to the Reformation, there was a conflict between the two different perspectives on the worship of the style, and one being uh, the base on the dramatic reenactment, and the other uh, the base on this uh, the true understanding of God. And the medieval churches conducted their worship services in Latin language, and few people were able to understand the language. And it was even said that the priests who read the Latin scriptures were not able to understand what they were reading. So even if so, the worship of the Middle Ages were able to be passed down very naturally. And in short, it is said that there were many priests who could uh, the read the Latin language word by word, but did not fully understand what it meant. And so for those who attended the worship service, they just followed this, uh, the repeated procedures. And when all those procedures were over, they they kind they thought that they were fully the uh, they fully just served the worship and worship um offered in this case was offered in a language that they did not understand um but the service was able to continue because it was carried out in a, accordance with a very well designed procedures and protocols and was always repeating in other words it continued uh, even though it was not comprehensible and this is also a, a, a characteristic of worship based on the dramatic reenactment. And it is similar to a Confucius uh, the ancestral rite. When a leader recites some phrases that you do not understand at all, but you just follow and think that um, the ancestral rites is um, they're doing very well. And uh, the word called hocus pocus um, that we use nowadays um, as a magic spell actually originates from the wordings uh, in um, the Catholic the worship. And hoc est anim corpus manum 
is also uh, the drive from the another another religious sector, and it means this is my body. And when there is when there uh, when the priests um, the call out the hocus pocus or hoc est any corpus man that the general public were not able to fully comprehend what it means. But whenever these wordings come out, they somehow think that of the kind of something magical is soon to be performed, or that we are in a certain of uh, the procedures of the important religious rites. And the Latin worship service of the Roman Catholic Church continued throughout the world until the 1960s. And the same was true in the Korea. So it has only been about 60 years since the Catholic Church held the services in Korean language. And this kind of tradition was able to be maintained and persisted because he followed a very well-planned procedures and he had the, uh, the protocol, uh, the repeated protocol, so people were able to the kind of guess uh, the, it's which position at which procedure they were in. So as long as the procedures all went by, then they thought that it was all goes really well. And even if not many of them were able to fully understand its content. And religious reformers felt uneasy with this kind of a worship. They wanted to know the reason for the worship, and then they wanted to hear what God's words was like, and they wanted to hear the interpretation. And there was also a the call uh, and the dire call by the the general public, and they really wanted to hear, hear the voice of the God instead of just following the certain procedures, which they have no idea what that means. And so as they desperately wanted to worship service where they could hear and understand the word of God, and that was the beginning of the, the second type of the religious worship. And let us uh, go back to today's text. It was a time when the Israelites were taken captive and returned to Israel. And uh, the verse 1 uh, of the chapter 8, it says, All the people gathered together in the plaza, which was in front of the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of the Moses, which the law had commanded Israel. So the Israelites gathered together in the square in front of the water water gate and wanted to hear the law of Moses. In short, they were sincere. A temple was built and the Levites were assigned of their roles uh, uh, to ensure that the temple's worship services were performed well and the appointed feasts were also observed. And to protect the temple, the walls of Jerusalem were also built strong. So we can say that all the procedures were there, all the laws were prepared, and all the physical infrastructure were there also. Then what were they lacking? It seems like everything was well prepared. They had rituals in place. They all had all the procedures ready. They had all the, pro uh, the physical properties ready as well. But they felt something was lacking. They sought the law of God. They longed for the word of God. And they were curious about what our Lord is saying to the people. And everyone was present there, but it wasn't just adults. 
and everyone came out and sat down. As in verse 2 and 3 it says, So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which included men and women and all those able to understand what, the, uh, what they heard. So he read it before the plaza in front of the water gate from dawn till noon before the men and women and those children who could understand. So all the people were eager to hear the book of the law. So men came out, women also came out, and not just adults, but also children were there as well. And the one important thing is that they were not forced to join the assembly. They all came out on their voluntary will. And they listened to those words. So today's text tell us the important thing the, the key is that the people took the initiative. They were not forced to join. Those who gathered around the water gate, those who called for the book of the law, came together on their own, and they did everything voluntarily. And they thought that they wanted the, to hear the voice of the Lord in a worship service which values words of God and the most the willingness of the listeners was crucial. The Bible says that they asked for the word and they listened to it. And uh, the verse 4 to 6 says, Ezra, the scribe who stood on a towering wooden platform constructed for this purpose, standing near him on his right were Matitiah, Sima, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, Maseiah. On his left were Putiah, Mishael, Makaijah, Hashum, Hasbadana, Ajek Raya, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in plain view of all the people, for he was elevated above all the people. When he opened the book, all the people stood up. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people replied, Amen and Amen, as they lifted their hands. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And what is interesting here is that they were many other people standing next to Ezra. And it seems like quite many, uh, the many names were um, the highlighted. They were the leaders, and they were one. They were also the members uh, among the audience. And we can find out that there were the lay leaders, uh, there were the governor, Jeremiah, the Levites, and they all came together. What well, the Bible could have only highlighted the Ezra's name or the scribes or the, some of the important names, but our Bible also uh, mentioned the many different persons. And they were all together. And the Bible lets everyone know that everyone participated together. The following verse, chapter, uh, the verse 7, gives us another important perspective. It says, the Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Acob, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Maseiah, Clita, Azariah, Josabite, Hanan, Haliah, of whom were Levites, were teaching the people the law as the people remaining st uh, remained standing. And then they read from the Book of God's law, explaining it in parting insights. Thus, the people gained understanding from what was read. Ezra probably read the law in Hebrew, but most people uh, likely spoke Aramaic, so some may have spoken languages from other countries as they returned from long uh, the captivity. So those who, who appeared before um, the those who were there also uh, the 
served as an interpreter uh, so that they can convey its message in another language. So they all came together and there were interpreters um, the conveying the Hebrew messages into Aramaic, but their efforts go one step further and it is said that the God's words were interpreted and comprehended to the general public. This means that the listeners who understood the Bible read, interpreted, and fully un comprehended, understood the Bible. And what happened in the end? The verse 9 says, All the people had been weeping. In short, Everyone was moved by the words. They understood the words and it touched and changed their daily lives. When the Levites saw this, they again said to them, Today is a holy day, so let us not be sad. The joy of the Lord is your strength. After hearing this, they responded this way in verse 12. So all the people departed to eat and drink to share their food with others and enjoy tremendous joy, for they had gained insight in the matters had been made known to them. Today's text shows a typical worship service in which the word of God is clearly understood. How can this kind of worship be possible? Is the worship of understanding possible? The willingness of people is the key. It is important to ensure that everyone can understand and communicate with them. And we also need helpers. We also need somebody who can understand the words that Ezra read. We also need interpreters. We also need someone who can convey his key messages. Through the transferring of these words, we understand the heart of God being moved together, crying together, rejoicing together, and living together is the form of worship that pursues understanding. And we, our worship is oriented towards worship that pursues understanding. And by doing so, we get a deeper understanding uh, of the God's words. Dear Soma friends, I really hope that we as one can flourish um, the within the Lord through this deep understanding of the God. Now, before I finish, let's have to read the verse 12. It says, For they had gained insight into matters that had been made known to them. Let us sincerely hope that this phrase come true to so many church members. Let us pray. God of love, thank you for giving us your precious words through the Bible. As we read and listen to the words of God, we hope to have a complete understanding through the whole Holy Spirit. May God give us a willing heart, give power to those who read and convey the message. May God work with wisdom to all who translate, interpret, and convey your message. Please help us become the members of Somang Church, where the word of the Lord is clearly revealed and everyone lives with that joy. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.